Today I'm building this Nakashima inspired live edge walnut table. Let's get right into the build. I've already milled and ripped the legs to their final dimension and now I'm cutting the bevel on the bottom of the leg so they'll be splayed outward. These legs are going to be attached to an arch base using a bridle joint. To cut the center notch for the bridle joint and to prevent tear out from the dado blade, I glued an angled stop block to my jig to register the leg against. I clamped it in place and since there is so much material to be removed, I took it in several passes to get to the final depth. This is also a very wide joint, so after I cut the first pass on all the legs, I pulled apart my jig and flipped the stop block around so I could cut the second pass. By flipping it around instead of moving the fence over, I'm ensuring that the joint will stay centered on the leg. Moving on to the arched base. I used a thin strip of maple and bent it between a few nails to create the desired arch shape and traced it onto the workpiece. The arch is going to be attached to a bezier curved trestle, so before I cut the arch shape, I am cutting the corresponding joints using a similar process as before. I also want to cut the corresponding joints for the legs as well, so I'm building a router jig around the leg to ensure I have an exact leg width. I clamped the jig down to my workpiece and routed out the waste. To transfer the location of the dado on the other side, I used my marking knife and a straight edge and just marked a line around the piece. Reset my jig and cut the other side out. I did a test fit and it was a little too tight. I guess better to be too tight than too loose, so I reset my jig eyeballing the mount and slowly sneaked up on a nice snug fit. Once I was satisfied with the fit, I took it to my miter saw and cut the piece to its final length while introducing a slight angle to add a little visual interest. Now moving on to the Bezier curve trussel piece. I played around in SketchUp with different curves until I found one that I liked. I printed it out to scale, cut it out, and traced it onto my workpiece. I used the same method as the arch piece to cut the joinery and then cut the shape out on the bandsaw. To smooth out the bandsaw marks, on the convex radius I used the disc sander, and on the concave curves I used the spindle sander. Then any place that needed a little extra fairing of the curves, I used a flexible sanding strip and just smoothed it out by hand. This joint is part bridle joint and part half lap, and since it was difficult to mark the exact depth of the half lap while it was square, and too dangerous to cut on the table saw, I marked it out and did the final cut by hand. Did a test fit and it was just a tiny bit too tight, so I pulled it apart and paired off little by little until I had a nice snug fit. I think that turned out pretty well. I'll just sand the bottom to match the radius of the curve after I assemble it. Then I just repeated the process on the curved trestle piece. Before cutting the legs to their final length, I did a little math to figure out the angle they were coming off the arch so that way the top would sit level. Once I got the right angle figured out, I just cut them all to length. 
The top is going to be attached to the legs using through tenons, so I set up a stop block so I could cut all the shoulders of the tenons to the same length. Of course the shoulder on the opposing side needed to be cut from the other side of the blade. I did some careful layout and repositioned the stop block on the other side of the blade and then cut the opposing shoulder. I did the same operation when cutting the cheeks of the tenons. I cut one side and then reset the cut to the other. Except this time, instead of being opposing, I just needed to be parallel. So I just slid the stop block over the width of the tenon and I was set to go. At this point, I've removed a fair amount of stock and it was getting kind of sketchy to stand the leg up at the table saw. And I've removed enough surface area that I don't really have a good, good place to reference from. So I laid out the final cuts and cut them by hand. To help secure the tenons to the top, I'm going to use some wedges. So I cut a couple of slots in the tenons at the bandsaw. When I drive the wedges in, I don't want them to split the leg. So to prevent this, I drilled holes at the bottom of each slot to relieve the pressure. All right, it's time to glue the base together. With five pieces and four joints, I wanted to make sure I had enough working time with the glue to be able to assemble all the parts as well as do any kind of adjustments to the legs that I needed to make sure they were at the right angle so the top sits level. While that was drying, I turned my attention to the top. The top, of course, was a bit too big for my planer, so I flattened it using a sled with my router. Once the top was flat, I went to work laying out the mortises for the legs. Since there isn't much of a square surface to measure from, I just positioned the base where I thought it looked good and built my template around the legs. I used CA glue and half inch plywood to build the template. Now with a little stubby pattern bit, I routed out a pocket on the underside of the top following my plywood jig. I transferred the mortise location to the face side using an eighth inch drill bit. I then flipped over the top and drilled a larger clearance hole for the router. The reason for the two step process was because I wanted to reduce the chance of blowout on the face side. If the large drill bit blew out a big splinter, it could have ruined the face or at least caused me to have to remove a bunch more material to get past the scar. Now from the top side, I used a large pattern bit to finish removing the waste. Then I did the final cleanup by hand with a mallet and chisel. Once the template material was removed, it was time to do a test fit. And of course, the test fit was too tight, so I had to do a little bit more strategic removal of some stock. Once I was happy with the fit, I ripped some material for the wedges, tapered them on the disc sander, and drove them home. Once the wedges were dry, I just trimmed off the excess with my pole saw and sanded it smooth. <laughs> 
I applied a satin poly off camera and here's the final results. If you're interested in what other projects I'm working on, give me a follow on Instagram. Of course, here are a few other videos to watch. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, leave a comment. You know what to do. Thanks for watching.